Is the U.S. men's national team starting to lose many dual nationals to other nations? Is this becoming a trend? Hi, if you're new here, I'm Felipe, the obnoxious host of Tactical Manager TV. And in today's video, we're going to address a few dual nationals we just most recently lost to other nations, some young talents we lost. We don't know if they would have been big time for the U.S. in the future, but they're young, they're talented, and maybe they can become. We don't know. I'm also going to make a list and talk about players that we could possibly lose and my expectations of whether we'll make it or not, if we're gonna be able to get these players for the US men's national team or not. While I do that, make sure to comment down below three of your top dual nationals that we do need to lock in for the US men's national team. Players that you think will be key for us in the future and for this current generation as well. So we have had much success lately as we did we were able to recruit Serginho Dest, Yunus Musa, and lock in certain players like Tim Weah, Giovanni Reina, Gianluca Busio will be locked in during Gold Cup, even though some of these we didn't really have the risk of losing besides Yunus Musa and Dest. With all that said, I'm talking a little bit too much. Let's dive into the players that we lost, the ones that we can lose, and the ones we should lock in. Roll the intro. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't roll the intro yet. Before we roll the intro, hit the like button. It really helps us. Now we can roll the intro. All right, so since this is a dual national video about different nations, I just thought it'd be fun for me to wear some different jersey throughout the videos of different nations. So this is my Denmark jersey that I have. So the first player I wanna talk about that we recently lost was Efrain Alvarez from LA Galaxy, which he will be in Gold Cup for L3 and he will be cap tied. To me, it's quite clear that he felt as a young player, he will have a better opportunity at L3. He can play at the wing, he can play at the attacking midfielder position. Their midfield has been aging and they're looking to replace them and he could be a very good option. Plus in the US men's national team, he would have to compete with young players like Caden Clark, Christian Pulisic, Brendan Arison, Giovanni Reina, Yunus Musa, lots of different talents and i just think he has a better opportunity in mexico along with that i think family ties probably played a role maybe he feels more mexican so we have lost efrain alvarez he will be cap tied to mexico now let's talk about the second player i want to talk about that we recently lost so another player we recently lost and will be cap tied during gold cup is ayo akinola from toronto so this one is a little weird to me since we do have issues at the nine while canada well they have a nine jonathan david that we also lost as well. And another option they have is Kyle Lahren up top. They have power up top while we don't at the nine. And I know Akinola maybe not have ever become our nine in the US Men's National Team in the future. He wouldn't become maybe, but it seems like he would have better chances of starting for the US Men's National Team there rather than Canada, but he went with Canada. So maybe, well, again, Canada just truly is his choice, his preference. And while he does play for Toronto, which is a Canadian team, even though they play in MLS. So, we have lost these two dual nationals, such as Efrain Alvarez and Ayakinola. But the one that caught my attention the most, most recently, is a player that we didn't really lose, but his action, what he did towards a USMNT call up. So let's talk about that player right now, which I'm already done with the players that we have lost. So now let's talk about the players that we could possibly lose. And I want to emphasize on two players first. So the first player I want to talk about that we can possibly lose is Julian Araujo. And this is an interesting one because he got actually called up by the US Men's National Team to play Gold Cup, but he rejected the call. I honestly fully understand it for several reasons. One, the right back depth chart in the US Men's National Team is deep. We have Serginho Dest, Reggie Cannon, Brian Reynolds, DeAndre Yedlin, Joe Scali, maybe very young, promising player. He might have a feeling that he could have a better chance to sell three. So losing Araujo is a strong possibility, plus the fact that his teammate Efrain Alvarez did choose L3 as I previously mentioned. But not just that, I could understand Julian Araujo's frustration with the USMNT program as he did go to the Olympic qualifying and he didn't get many minutes on a very weak team where he should have got minutes right there. So I understand his frustration along with the fact with all the player options we have to write back. So Julian Araujo could be a young talent that we could lose to L3. It's a big possibility and he would have better opportunities there, even though I do think he's good enough to compete in the future for a right back position as he was called up for Gold Cup, we might lose him. Yes, I also have a jersey of the overhype everything English national team. I do have it. And the reason I'm putting it on because now I want to talk about another player we could possibly lose and I think we will lose. It's Alex might now he caught my attention months ago when we started scouting him for the usmnt abroad series we do here in the channel 
Many Americans believe we can get him, but I really don't think so. He seems fully invested in England, only played for their youth teams. His Instagram has a lot of England on it. The only way we get him is if England does not want him. He's also mostly a winger where we have already Christian Pulisic and Reyna playing there, for example, along with Tim Weah, Brendan Harrison. If he ain't good enough for England, we might never call him ourselves as well. I don't think we will get this one. So yeah, essentially what I'm saying is we will only get him if he's not good enough for England. And the wingers we have right now, the options we have, if he's not good enough for England, he might not be good enough for us as well, or maybe he'll be a backup. He plays a lot as a left winger and we have Christian Pulisic there, all right? Now let's talk about a few players that I think we will get them, but I want to make a list. And by then, make sure you hit the like button to help the channel. And don't forget to comment your top three dual nationals that we have to lock in. Don't talk about Des, Musa, the ones we already have cap tied. Talk about the ones we need to lock in. And I know, I know, you're going to say, we don't know if Yunus Musa is cap tied or not because of that whole misunderstand we don't know if he's kept tight but he's committed to the u.s men's national team all right let's go to the players that are missing and i'm gonna skim through them very quickly okay so a player i want to address now is johnny cardoso that he's a brazilian american he's currently picking up good form for international in brazil under a new coach he's playing as a six and eight and even as a 10 for them now do i think we're gonna get johnny cardoso i think the u.s men's national can lock in johnny cardoso the only issue i think is if brazil calls up johnny cardoso at any point if he breaks in and he's 19, so he does have a possibility of getting called up in the future. Right now, it's a very tough competition. But if Brazil does call up Johnny Cardoso, I don't see him picking the United States over Brazil. All right. No bias there from my side. No bias from him. It's just a stronger national team. And let's be honest here. He grew up in Brazil. He definitely feels more Brazilian. But with all that said, I'm hoping the U.S. men's national team can lock him in before that happens. And hopefully he does become a Brazil quality player in the future. But he's already wearing the USMNT jersey. And I know you guys can say, well, you're Brazilian. Wouldn't you want him there too? Brazil has enough. I want to share. I would love to have Johnny here, a Brazilian American in the national team. I would feel that connection with him. And that's why I think we're going to get Johnny. Another player we should be a little bit worried about that we could lose. And I think he would be important in the future is David Ochoa from RSL. So David Ochoa did accept the call for Nations League. So he clearly does want the US men's national team because even though he wasn't cap tied, something could have happened. Zach Steffen got injured. If Ethan Horvath got injured as well, he would have played and he would have been cap tied. However, the Mexican Ochoa is aging and they've been called old goalkeepers still like Talavera all of them over 35 years of age so they're aging the Mexican goalkeepers while we in the US Men's National Team have a lot of goalkeepers at age 25 to 30 like Zach Steffen, Ethan Horvath, Matt Turner so it could take a little longer for Ochoa to break into our squad I could see Mexico try and recruit David Ochoa within the next year and depending on how the odds are he could go towards Mexico even though he's showing a lot of promising signs on staying with the US Men's National Team my bet is David Ochoa would stay with the U.S. Men's National Team, but we have to be open to the possibility of losing him. Another Mexican-American that we do need to point out is Jonathan Gomez from Louisville. You know, the thing with Jonathan Gomez is we really need a left back. And the whole issue with it is he has played in youth camps for the L3 camp and for the U.S. Men's National Team camp. He has been invited for the L3 senior squad camp, and he has been in the provisional roster for Goku for the U.S. Men's National Team. So Jonathan Gomez, we will have an interview with him here in the channel. I don't think he'll address that, but I think the chances of getting him right now, it's 50-50. Now I'm going to mention a few more names just to help you with your comment down below the three most important dual nationals that we have to get. Obviously, I won't be able to name all of them, so you can feel free to mention any names I didn't mention in this video. But I'm going to try to help you out by giving you a couple more names, ideas, and you'll comment down below. And at the end of the video, I'll come to my conclusion if we are on a trend to start losing a lot of dual nationals or not. So the first one worth mentioning is Kick Period that we did have an interview with him here at the channel. He's a Dutch American that plays for 20 and belongs to Ajax and plays as lefty center back. Another one I want to point out is Malik Sonogo, which we don't have much info on how good he actually is in a senior level. And he might ever not even be good for the US Men's National Germany. We don't know. He is a center forward for Union Berlin's U19 team. Maybe he'll get a chance with the senior squad this season. Another one that I want to talk about is Folarin Balogun that just renewed his contract at Arsenal. He's English-American and maybe Yunus Musa can help us get him. We do need a 9 and he can play as a 9. Another one that I want to talk about is the one we made a video here on the channel, Kate Cowell. He is Mexican-American. He's another player to keep an eye on. Now, Justin Che, that is back with FC Dallas, is another player we interviewed here. He is American and he can also play for Germany. And well, Germany does not look as a threat right now as he's not playing there. So at least for the time being, it doesn't look like a threat. However, 
Justin Che could be heading to Bayern in January, so that could change. Last but not least, I want to mention Brian Oko from the 17-year-old center back from RB Salzburg. However, he does seem to lean more towards Switzerland, despite being born in Houston. So my hopes for him are low, but he's a very talented center back and I would like for us to try to recruit him at least. And I'm, I'm sure Greg Berhalter has reached out to him at this point. So there's a lot more quality dual nationals to talk about, but I can't mention them all in this video. Feel free to comment any that I forgot down below. So what is the reason I made this video? It's to answer the question, are we going to start to lose many dual nationals to other nations? And the question of that is we don't truly know, but it does look like there's a trend going on that as our depth increases, we get more talent, it's going to be normal for us to lose some players to other CONCACAF nations, to weaker nations. We could lose players to El Salvador, Jamaica, Canada, even Mexico, even though Mexico is still pretty damn strong and probably as deep as us. I think that trend will go on. It'll happen quite often. Now, what we can't allow to happen is lose players that could be key to our roster. And I do think we could do that if we lose Junior Rajo, for example. There's a lot of players we should be recruiting in Europe. So I think we're not gonna go with this hot streak forever. We have lost a lot of dual nationals in the past, including, remember, Italian Rossi. But I think this trend will go on more often with smaller CONCACAF nations. I think that's gonna become very common. It has in the past as well, but I think it's gonna be more and more common as the years go by and the United States develops more talent. And you know, that just shows more growth of the sport in the country as we develop so many talents that we can even export them to other countries. We can even afford to do so and still keep our nation competitive. Guys, I want to thank you all very much for watching hopefully we do get most of the dual nationals make sure to comment your top three dual nationals we need to lock in hit the like button and well have a great day